Hi y'all, Mike Peace, welcome to my shop. Uh, a, few, a couple of weeks ago I had a uh, wood turner over for, for wood turning uh, lessons and he wanted to buy one of my boxes and he picked out one of my favorites, the three-legged box I did a video on a, a couple of months ago and he took it home and he was going to put sugar in it. His mother-in-law was visiting from India and she kept admiring it so he wound up giving it to her. So now I can say I have one of my pieces in, a, in an overseas collection. So. Uh, I like that three-legged box design, so I thought I'd make another one out of, out of cherry, and here it is. This is a sweet little uh, project. This one might be a little more detailed than the last one, so keep watching. Okay, I've got a piece of dried cherry that had already been rounded that was given to me. That's uh, the right size for this box. It's been in the shop for uh, several years, so I'm going to uh, treat it as dry. So the first thing I'm going to do is true it up. Now I need to think a little bit about what size tenon because I want to think about what size chuck I want to use for this. I didn't think through this as clearly as I should have. I should have used a very large tenon with a large chuck for the base end and a smaller tenon with a smaller chuck for the top as we'll see as we move on. back to this design let me get a margin for error here on the part so I part down where the lid's going to be and then I measure the diagram to see the width of the uh, the lid and then I start removing some bulk wood with a spindle roughing gouge. Get the peeling cut. You can only do that if this is flat ground, flat across. There, I've got that marked. You use the spindle gouge to come in here, bracing it here, come right there. And this is almost like doing a cove. It actually is a large asymmetrical probe, I guess you could say. Don't take it too far down though or I'll lose that shoulder for the chuck. So I'm going to have to do some of this on the box. So I'm going to use these. 35 millimeter jaws. These are record power, so they don't they are not a dovetail enough. I don't know what I was thinking, but I think it'll if I can get it in there. I'm not gonna worry about a perfect tenon, but I can't get it in there. Here. It's got a short handle, so you got to be careful on these larger pieces not to get it to bind up on you. Get off and we'll slow it down to about 1100. Close, so I could probably just break this off like that. You know, now that I look at this, I can actually drill this all the way through because this is the size drill bit I'm going to use for that peg. So. Wow. Uh, get rid of some excess wood. I better luck cutting clean shoulder with a box scraper. So I orient this straight in. pretty box it's worth thinking through these things and sometimes I can't think through everything through a script 
because, as they say, the, your best plan doesn't survive first contact with the enemy. But if you have a plan, you have something you can deviate from. If you don't have a plan, you're just flying in the dark. If I don't do it now, I won't be able to do it later. Got that as a reference because I want to know where the where to start. Lubricant keep the uh, temperature down so it doesn't heat check. Details are important on small little boxes. Okay. There, that's that's perfect. It fits. Now let's get back to the box top. A base remounted in the chuck. I need to do a recess that will hold this so I can finish the lid. So let me just... Some people say this is very dangerous. And I guess if you're not careful, it could be. So to the pencil mark. Let's see how close we get. It's too bad. Adjust this fit later, but it's essentially I use parallel walls and I make a very snug fit now. Just hope I can get this out. friction fit here so I can do the final sanding on this little bud 500 grit Just really polish this up still got to put a finish on it but I want this thing to just be smooth as silk now tricks gonna be can I get this thing out of here 
it's going to be a challenge. Um, I think I'm going to do two things. Let's put this drill bit in here. I'm afraid I'll break it. start turning that bead. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Too much steel and I guess they didn't have clamp tight enough. Yeah, let's do a little forensic analysis and you can see where I got a catch where it's just too much steel on that dried wood. Um, but no, no damage. I'm going to use this. I need to leave room for the feet. So I don't need to go any deeper than that. Let's bring it back just a couple of millimeter for safety's sake. Be careful cutting to the chuck. Bracing it with my finger. spiral. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Side. Oh, that's a good looking bead there. Uh -oh. There's a brazy paste here. And a brazy pad. Now I can start hollowing and I know exactly how far down I need to uh, how far over I can afford to come on this undercut. Time to start hollowing. I had to go sharpen this tool. This is what some people call a nickel scraper. It's smaller than a nickel. <laughs> But in any case, it's rounded over, it's got a profile, and I'm going to be able to undercut the lip with this. This is 
is a Hunter Viceroy uh, with a cupped carbide cutter. Uh, it does a beautiful job on, on boxes. And I'm just going to come in and start working from, from the center up to the top and then bring it back a little bit. You keep it flat on the tool rest. Pull it. tool I use all the time but for inside hollowing of boxes especially deep boxes it just makes such a beautiful cut uh, it takes very little little sanding it is more easily controlled than a spindle gouge so I really like it for hollowing big openings in, in boxes like this but this is the same cutter I have on my hollowing system it's a little bitty I think it's a 3 16 cents cup cutter it's not the same as flat carbide. It, it, it's, it's much, much sharper, and it is a cutter, not a scraper. For sanding the inside, I like this uh, inertia sander because it's, it's easy to handle. And for a box this big, I can use a 3-inch, snip it a little bit. It'll go in there easily, and it just does a great job. Okay, I've made a jam chuck that the speed will just ride in. And let's just tap it in place. So I'm bringing that up. I've got the outside, uh, or the inside rather, marked. This is the uh, where the bottom of the, the leg can be, can be carved to. Uh, the inside of the box is just a little bit to the outside of that. So I've curved that around. So now I'm going to reduce this, hollow this out some, and then start carving the legs. We're going to leave that center support. one. Okay, that gives me something to, to shoot for and the feet are going to come up like this. Marking. Where I think I'm going to have to cut with a coping saw. You see, I've rough cut these pretty closely. Not too bad. The rest of it, I'm going to do the final shaping with a uh, Dremel, Dremel burr. I'm use low speed. Move this up, or I can kind of brace myself a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I switch to a rotary sanding sanding drum, a large one. I'm on low, low speed. Okay, time to turn this little nub off. I'm going to do that with my detail gouge and just keep coming in here to the center. The little tool rest just a spot. Make sure the feet aren't going to bump on it. I think that's as far as I want to go without using a saw. So let me find a, let's just use this coping saw, see if that'll work. If I can get in there, oh yeah, I can get in there. Okay, now I can get in there again with that sander. Kind of clean that up a little bit. Using my collet chuck to mount a, about a one inch uh, sanding mandrel that I got from Wood Turner's Wonders. It works great for little projects like this. Sanding the bottom. Shaping around the feet. Pig in there and there we go. If you're not a subscriber, I'd appreciate if you leave a comment below as to what you learned out of this, this video. Uh, if you're interested in another uh, video that I mentioned earlier, a project on turning a three-legged box, I'll have a link, link above. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.